Okay, for day three for our mobility, um, what we're going to have Tyler do is we're going to have him start to focus on operating out of that squat position. So the mobility seems like an easy move, but Tyler can probably tell you after doing these, it's not always the easiest move. We're working on our strength, working on getting the right position, and we're also working on being mobile out of that position. So Tyler's going to go down on a good squat. Okay, we're going to get that 90 degree level, okay? And we're going to then reach up with our right hand, okay? Lengthen that right side, come back down. We're going to reach up with our left hand all the way up. Try to feel elongated on that left side. We're going to do each one of those five times for one of our sets. So we'll do 10 and then we'll do three sets of those. Okay. One more. Good. Okay, so for today on a receiving, um, yesterday we had done all of our relaxed. Uh, or our primary receiving. Today we're gonna to be talking about our secondary or our active, those are just interchangeable terms. When we talk about, um, when we had talked about relax, we said there is no proper stance. It's just, can you get to the bottom of the zone and can you be mobile? When we get to the active stance, now we've gotta do three things out of there. We've gotta be able to, one, receive a pitch, two, block a pitch, and three, be able to get out of the shoot so we can throw guys out when they when they do run. So when we go to an active stance, as Tyler gets down here, you give a sign and then you pop up. And we're looking for some things. We're looking for flat back, as flat as we can get it. The butt's going to be slightly elevated. You'll see that his feet have shifted out. Okay, and we'll see a slight stagger of his right side. The slit, the, if we start to stagger too much, we'll have to stagger a ton. Okay. The problem that we run into is every time that we need to receive a pitch right over here, go ahead and catch this ball, Tyler, it's really hard to get our shoulder behind the baseball or our chest behind the baseball. If we can't get our shoulder behind that baseball, we're going to lose all of those pitches because there's no strength behind the ball. Okay, go ahead and hop back up. So slight stagger to the feet, our feet are a little bit wider, our butt's elevated, our back is flat, and notice that Tyler's in a spot where he can still get to the bottom of the zone. A lot of times when guys get in an active spot here, that glove starts to elevate, and as every single hitter knows, we'd love to get a fastball right here. Okay, so if we give that hard, high target, that's where that pitcher's gonna throw the baseball. Okay, so that's our basic active stance. Okay, for today's blocking drill, we're going to block and recover. Okay, so there's two ways that we're going to do this. The first one is going to be like on a drop third strike. So it's going to be a curveball in the dirt. Tyler's going to be down in an active blocking stance. Go ahead and get down. I think we've already blocked. We're going to assume that this ball hits off of Tyler's chest and it rolls out to this ball right here. So when I say go or he can do it on his own, he's going to pop up. He's going to pick up the baseball, set his feet to throw the ball, throw the guy out at first base going down the line. Go. Good. Okay. This time we're going to do the exact same thing and we're going to do this. Now, when Tyler does demonstrate, when he demonstrates getting this baseball right here, notice how his feet, his hips, and his shoulder are all in alignment to throw the ball to first base, but that's not the end of it. Notice the, the hip hinge that he has, notice the strength that he has in his legs. When we get out of our legs, anytime we throw, velocity goes down. We typically let that ball run on us a little bit. We miss arm side. So go ahead and watch how much strength he has in his legs as he goes here. So he goes to a block position. Go. Fix it up. And we get to that strong throwing position. Good front side in his legs. Okay? So part two to this drill, okay, is going to be very similar, except now we're setting our feet to throw the ball to second base. So we're in, our, we're in our active stance, we go to a block, curveball the dirt, fastball the dirt, whatever it is. The runner on first base decides to take off for second base. So as a catcher, we need to get up quick, we need to recover, and we're going to set our feet, throw the ball to second base. Okay? Go! Again, you're looking at the same thing, strong in his legs, strong in the baseball with his lower half, good hip hinge, good front side. Okay? Let's do one more. Okay? I'll just see how we do this one here, get around that baseball a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to block that baseball. It's the one that gets way over here. Going to second base, go. Okay, for today's throwing, uh, we're going to talk about T drill, which every catcher has always done as a T drill. Um, a lot of catchers will work a T, or they'll work a little bit of an L. And a lot of times they get in between, and then also they have the pitches to have to work away. So when we think about a T drill, it would be great if every single pitch hit a square in the chest, so we could always work directly towards the base, but that's not very realistic in a game. 
because pitchers miss, miss in, miss out. So what we're gonna do here, this is his T line, so this is his center line. Okay, so Tyler's gonna start with just doing a couple. Um, coming out of the shoot, he's in an active position, and he's just gonna try to get his feet down quickly. So he's gonna simulate catching a baseball, and he's gonna get to that line as quick as possible. Okay, now from this position, again, notice that he's in his legs, he's not way forward, he hasn't lost all of his backside. Okay, he's in a strong position right here. He's gained just a little bit of ground there. And you'll notice if we're throwing the ball, if it's right down the middle, his front side will be slightly open so he can get his backside through, but he's not offline. He hasn't stepped open and he also hasn't stepped close. Okay, now let's do the pitch with inside. So now this is the pitcher, you know, the, the pitcher we set up here. Guy runs and it's going to miss on an inside, uh, inside. So it's going to be very hard to actually work a T. A lot of times we start to work an L. Okay. Go ahead, get that inside pitch. Okay, so a lot of times this is considered kick and replace. So we're gonna use our right foot, we're gonna kick our left foot out of the way, and we're gonna work around, okay? Notice that his feet are still aligned, left side slightly open, he's still in his legs, front half, back half are strong. Okay, go ahead and Tyler, do it one more time and show how uh, younger, the younger guys can get on their heels, okay? So this is when we work an L before we get really strong and, and mobile. When younger guys do this, a lot of times they'll go like that, and you'll see them start to lose their balance on their heels. When they lose their balance on their, uh, on their backside, there's zero strength to throw the baseball, okay? And the last one that we want to do is what we just call a no-step, okay? So now Tyler's going to work on a pitch that the pitcher misses way outside, and if you think about it, most of the time that our pitchers miss, they typically miss this way, especially if the guy's going to run a little bit, so we've got to be ready to throw on that right side. So go ahead and give him that active stance. Okay, it means in that right side catch, little jab step, okay, and then he's ready to throw the baseball. Okay, that's going to be way faster than trying to work a tee there or try to kick and replace because that ball is already outside of our shoulders.